Amelia Ann and the Green Umbrella, told by Constance Heward, pictured by Susan B. Pierce. Her name was Amelia Ann Stiggins. She was a pale child with black hair, which she wore in curl rags from Friday night till Sunday morning. Her mother was poor and took in washing. Because besides Amelia Ann, who was the eldest, there were five other little Stigginses to feed. Now, it happened one day just before Christmas that the five little Stigginses had colds in their heads. So Mrs. Stiggins sat them in a ring in the kitchen with their feet in the middle in a tub of mustard and water. After that, she put them into the big bed and gave them hot gruel to drink. All the while, Amelia Ann stood gloomily by and shook her head, which was covered with curl rags. The reason for the curl rags was that all the village children had been invited to a grand tea party at the Squires the next day, and Amelia Ann was gloomy because it did not seem as if the five little Stigginses would be able to go. Sure enough, the next day the colds were worse, and at three o'clock in the afternoon, Amelia Ann's hair was taken out of the rags, and she put on her Sunday dress and coat and hat, and started off to the tea party with 25 ringlets bobbing about round her neck. And the five little Stigginses sat up in the big bed and howled horribly with disappointment. <laughs> but Amelia Ann had hardly got out of the front door when she was back again. I want the umbrella, she said, and she took it from the corner in the parlor where it lived. It was large and green with a goose's head for a handle. It's never going to rain, Amelia Ann, said Mrs. Stiggins. Whatever do you want to take the umbrella for, I don't know. But Amelia Ann tossed her head and said she wasn't so sure about the rain. And she started off again with the green umbrella clasped in one hand. The squire was a jolly old man with a round red face and a white beard like Father Christmas. But the squire's sister, Miss Josephine, was a cross old maid, and she thought it was a stupid thing to give a tea party to the village children. She was always there to see that they behaved themselves. Now, Miss Josephine's eagle eye was upon Amelia Ann as she took her seat at the great long table with the other children and... Amelia Ann Stiggins, she said. What are you doing with our great umbrella in here? You ought to have left it in the hall with your coat and hat. When tea was over, the children went back to the hall and put on their hats and coats. And as they went out, a smart footman at the door gave each child an orange, an apple, and a bag of sweets. Amelia Ann was the last to leave because her hat had fallen down off the peg where she had hung it and was only found after all the other children had gone. She took her orange and apple and bag of sweets from the smart footman and said, Thank you, sir, and was just ready to go out through the door when suddenly Miss Josephine stepped forward. Amelia Ann Stiggins, she said, I will put up your umbrella for you. And she took it firmly out of Amelia Ann's hand. Oh, mum, cried Amelia Ann, and the orange and apple and bag of sweets fell down and rolled away under the chairs, and she clutched Miss Josephine's arm in both hands. But Miss Josephine shook her off and held up the umbrella and fairly shot it open. And out upon the floor, in the bright light that came from the hall lamp, fell jam tarts and iced cakes and biscuits and scones. And Amelia Ann covered her face with her hands and wept. <laughs> Greedy child! said Miss Josephine, but the squire looked down at the feast on the floor and patted Amelia Ann kindly on the shoulder. Come, come, he said. It was your own tea you put into the umbrella. 
I know, because I was watching you, and you never ate anything at all. Oh, sir, cried Amelia Ann, uncovering her face. I'm glad I saw you, because I didn't take a bit more of what I could easy of it. And the five of them's got colds in their heads. And when I left them, there was all owl and something awful. And I couldn't bear to go home and tell them everything, and them not have a bite, as you might say. Well, well, said the squire. I thought there was somebody missing. And of course, there'll be five teas left over. And I think we could find a sixth as this one is spoilt, John, to the smart footman. A basket, please, with cakes for six people. And John went like a shot while Miss Josephine dropped the umbrella and walked slowly past Amelia Ran and the squire with her nose in the air and a look of horrified disgust on her face. In two minutes, John was back again with a huge basket covered with a white cloth. And 15 minutes later, Amelia Ann staggered into the Stiggins' house and upstairs to the bedroom with the huge basket on one arm and the green umbrella clutched in the other. And the five little Stigginses sat up in bed with their eyes nearly starting out of their heads. And Mrs. Stiggins sat bump upon a chair because she said it gave her quite a turn when Amelia Ann took the cover off the basket. For inside that basket were cakes enough for six and Mrs. Stiggins as well and oranges and apples and bags of sweets. And when everybody had finished, Amelia Ann was sure that she must have eaten quite twice as much as she had meant to bring home in the green umbrella. The end.